Oh, it's here. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. Hey guys, Simply Betty here. This is going to be another video about live food, specifically live food cultures that I like to keep, that I'm redoing because I've lost a lot of my food cultures for my fish uh, just this summer. So I've reordered starter cultures for the things I used to keep, and I'm gonna be restarting everything this winter so I have a good supply of live foods for my fish on hand because they're really beneficial to have if you're breeding and raising fish. In my last video about live food cultures, um, I did it about white worms, and I took everyone through the steps of how I made, how I'm remaking my white worm cultures, which is a big white terrestrial worm that I like to raise for my betta fish. Well, today I'm doing black worms. Black worms are an aquatic worm. They're not terrestrial like the last one. They're actually an aquatic worm. They're black in color. They're really nutritious. They're considered like the filet mignon for fish. Like there's no fish out there that's ever going to refuse black worms. A lot of people like to use them for conditioning breeder fish and for raising spawns, raising fry. And they're just, they're really nutritious. And I want my own culture again. You can buy black worms from specialty pet shops. And that's usually how people do it. They buy it and then they feed it to their fish. But I used to actually have a culture. Just in a 10 gallon tank, I had black worms and I would take and take and take from my cultures and I'd never run out. And I think it's because they were reproducing for me. I ended up losing my culture. It, uh, my tank crashed and they're really sensitive and I lost everything. And I went for a long time without having black worms. But today I'm opening up a new box of black worms. I bought like a quarter pound of these wonderful little worms and I can't wait to open them up. I've been looking forward to having black worms again. My fish really, really liked them. It was kind of a fun challenge. And I feel like this time, I'd like to do a more serious experiment to see if they were actually breeding for me. Now the thing about black worms is they're pretty sensitive. Um, they prefer cooler temperatures. They need highly oxygenated water because they basically breathe through their skin. Ooh. Okay, I'm opening up the bag right now. It looks super gross. It came with an ice pack, an insulated box. Oh man. Wow. This is what a bag of a quarter pound of black worms looks like. Oh, I can't actually tell if they're alive. I don't see any movement. Maybe some movement. Okay, I'm gonna go get these guys acclimated and in water. I went ahead and I poured some really cold refrigerated aged aquarium water into this little a plastic container and I put the worm bag in there just for a minute to s acclimate them. Okay, I went ahead, I let them acclimate for a bit. I cut the baggie open. Now I'm just gonna dump all the worms out. Mmm. Okay, I'm just getting all the last little wormy scraps out. Okay, I'm just gonna give them a nice rinse. Let's see if I can get a better shot, more downwards. I'm just checking to see if they look like they're alive. I definitely see plenty of movement. Like undoubtedly there's some that in, in here that have died and you have to be careful about that because they'll foul the water and uh, pollute your culture. There, there's a nice up close shot. Worms on my fingers. <laughs> it looks like it belongs in a scary movie. But these here are black worms, they're harmless. They eat microorganisms, algae, protozoa, bacteria, stuff like that, they don't bite. So I know I wanna make a culture of these, but for now it's getting pretty late where I am and I'm just gonna pop these in the fridge. That's how you store black worms generally. Um, you just, you have a container in your fridge and you uh, refresh the water every day and you rinse off the black worms and they can keep for a really long time that way. So I'm gonna come back to this little project maybe tomorrow and try to set up a little experiment. Don't tell my family I put worms in the fridge. It's our little secret. Okay guys, it's the next day. I'm ready to take some of these black worms and put them into a little tank that I prepared. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a specific volume of worms and then I'm gonna put them into the, the holding tank where I'm gonna experiment to see if I can get them to breed, if I can get a population going. Cool. 
this tub here is where I'm going to put the culture. So this is just a plain rubber tub. It's just kind of a temporary thing right now, but down here at the bottom, I have an unbleached paper towel, which I'm weighing down with a few rocks. Bacteria is going to grow on this paper towel and the black worms are going to eat it. This is a method that I've never used before, but it's recommended by a lot of people online. There are pros and cons to it, but it's just what I'm going to do for now. And of course I have a mature sponge filter right here. Here's my worm culture in there. I'm going to let it float. So I'm pretty excited to have black worms again. Once I can prove that like what I'm doing is going to actually increase their numbers and I actually have a steady culture going, then I'll go ahead and I'll share which method works best for that. Be sure to give this video a like, maybe a subscribe, and maybe a share if you're a worm enthusiast like me. Thanks for watching and have a great day.